But let me welcome my first guest, William Crando. Calls himself William the, the bad, bad boy. boy trainer, indeed. The bad boy trainer. How you doing? Thank you for having me on the show tonight. And John Gordon, uh, you <coughs> are the vice president. I think you'll say the associate vice president. Associate vice president at the Fortune Society. The Fortune yeah. Society. And uh, your mission is to ensure... So we work with people coming home from prison and jail, help them re-enter society, get, get employment, get, uh, get a, uh, an education, a high school diploma. We have a drug treatment program, housing, and... Uh, alternatives to incarceration, and we also we also advocate for changes in the criminal justice system, so that uh, the situation that people are in, yes, hopefully will improve. Well, let's begin <coughs> there, um, the criminal justice system. And uh, my first question, of course, is to you. Um, should I call you William? Just, just call me the bad boy trainer. Yeah, if they Google it, that's how they find me, bad boy trainer. That's what I like to be known by now. Um, for several reasons. One, I'm trying to not leave my past in the past, but when you ask in questions like how have incarceration changed me, it, it um, opened my eyes to a wide perspective of the name William Crandell might be a little tainted, but my, my bad boy trainer, it's a personality. It's no different from um, Jay-Z being called Jay-Z, but his real name is Sean Carter. So I, I use that straw man now, and that's how I'm able to reintegrate perfectly into society and not be hindered, but be listened to when, you know. Yes. How did incarceration change your life? <clears throat> um, incarceration changed my life totally. It, it, it helped reshape me and, and further define me because I already had my college degree before I went to prison. So I was a, on a different spectrum than a lot of people going in through the penal system. Um, it was a rites of passage for me. It put me in, in, a, in, a, in a mind frame and a mindset that you have to pull yourself up from the bootstraps and become a man. You have to resurrect yourself. You got to stop doing the things that you're doing, expecting the same results and change yourself. So that's what prison did to me because it gave me the time to do that. Eight and a half years. <laughs> you discourage people from engaging in the type, certain types of behavior um, that would land them in prison. Um, what was prison life like? Ah, oh, man. Uh, my best thing that I would have to say is this is close as you can ever be to death. You're like a walking zombie. You have no mother and father, no more, so to speak, because it's only through phone. Maybe some jails not even contact. My first year, I wasn't able to touch anybody. It's through the glass. They sent me from New York to Oklahoma, from Oklahoma to Pennsylvania to Jersey. So I was in diesel therapy for 18 months before I even got to cop out or decide if I wanted to pick my drawer, whatever that case might be. So it's, it's, the, the conditions is terrible. I mean, the coldest day that you could think of, like colder than today, it's only 40 degrees today, but you might be woken up at 2 in the morning, German shepherds on your bed, shake down, everybody out. Out means out of the building. I don't care if you wear contacts, glasses, you need a cane, a crutch, get out now. All men moving. All men is 150 men on my block. Certain, certain jails is more men. Um, terrible. You might be standing outside in the rain visit. You're getting stripped butt bone naked after you've seen your loved ones for however many hours you were allowed to because if it was a fog, your parents or your loved ones could have been waiting in the parking lot to the fog cleared Then after that the count cleared. I mean the food, terrible. We had something, excuse my French, called S-H-I-T on a shingle. It was basically like beef and gravy. You didn't really want to eat that but if you didn't have commissary, you, you had to make do. Um, I stopped watching TV. Commissary? Convins yeah, commissary. That's basically your bank account as an incarcerated Scarface or as a convict. So what you do is commissary, you can even earn it, but most of the jobs are paying 35 cents, maybe a dollar fifteen an hour if you're in Unicor. We'll talk about that later. Or if you have your parents, but most of us, excuse me, we don't really have resources. That's why allegedly we were doing crimes. So now we're looking for these same people to send us commissary, which is money out of society onto our books for us to buy toiletries, Sneakers, toothpaste, soap. Discourage people from doing the things that will get them incarcerated. You said you have a college degree. What happened? Um, you, can't, you can't discourage anybody from doing um, what, what you feel they should be doing. It has to be a conscious decision made by that person. So even though I had a college degree, I knew that my society, the, the, the things that were coming into my mind, I had to have money. And in order to get money, I didn't really buy into the concept of paying for another degree and another degree to get a job at the end of the day that's paying me less than my degree was worth. And then I owe for the, for the remaining years of my life until I pay it off. So I decided to get it the fast way. 
because that's what was on TV, that's what's on the radio, that's what was in my environment more. Even though I live in a, in a dual household, my mother and father both raised me and I grew up in a house, but I had to go to school and pass the projects. And uh, as the only child, I had to be tougher than my, 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 my neighbors who had big brothers. So it led from sticks to knives to guns, to drugs, <laughs> to sex, to wow, I'm getting it. I'm riding around and I'm getting it, you know? John, Gordon. I need to hear from you. Yeah. Uh, you're, you, for the last how many years? 12 years? 11 years I've 11 been at the years. Fortune Society. You've been yeah. at the Fortune Society. Yeah. And the Fortune Society does what? So we work with people coming home from prison. We, we help them. People come home. They, they need housing. They need a job. A lot, of, a lot of people, particularly coming out of jail, out of Rikers Island maybe, need drug treatment. They, they, uh, they need to reconnect with their family. Uh, a lot of times they may come home. People come home from prison. They've got children, they may, they may owe $50,000 in, in, uh, in arrears support. for child support. Yes, they do. <coughs> it's very common. It's, uh, it's considered in, in New York State, um, if you go to prison, it's considered willful unemployment. And, and your, your child support just continues, the arrears oh, continue to grow. And so when you come home from prison, and it's, a, it's really a disincentive to reconnect with your family, right? Which is, of course, the thing that we all want and know is the best thing that can really happen both for the family and for the person coming home. And the thing that we know is that people are going to come home, right? So right now there's 55, 56,000 people in prison in upstate New York. There's another, every year maybe 80,000 to 100,000 people cycle through Rikers Island every year, every year, right? So there's maybe 13 or 14,000 people out there right now. Those people are all coming home, you know? They're coming back to the community. And so the system, the system really, in, you know, the, the, the conditions that, that uh, Will was describing here, they, you know, they, they don't really lead to prepare people to come back and, and be able to play a meaningful and constructive role in their community, support their family, f have a, you know, uh, find the kind of job that, that will allow them to, to live a sustainable life, right? You, you come home. You go out, you get a job. One of the first questions that you're going to be asked is, you ever been convicted of a felony? And so you, you know, yes, and probably you're out the door. Or maybe they don't say, but then they never call you back, right? There's actually a campaign now going on in the, in, around the country, really, and, and here in New York as well, called Ban the Box. The oh. box refers to the, the little box that's check off if you've been, oh. if you've been uh, you you or convicted of a, a crime. Yeah. So, so the notion is that, that uh, people, when they come in, they shouldn't, uh, that shouldn't be the first thing that you be asked, right? The question is, you, know, you come in and you, you're looking for a job at the Fortune Society, so, so okay, are you somebody that, that, do you seem to have the skills and experience and the motivation to, to work well here? So okay, then maybe if I say yes, we have a good interview, then maybe I'll, I'll consider what are some of the, your background and stuff like that. But to, the notion is to ban that from initial, from initial consideration. So people aren't just screened out, because that's mm -hmm. what happens. Exactly. People get screened out because of the, of the conviction.